I'm refueling the backup generator. Power should be on. Copy? Confirmed. Power's back on. Have you located the objective yet? Not yet. Man, what a bastard there. These bodies better not move. Okay, I'm outside the office. Good. Now get the data and get out. I'm on it. Keep your damn pants on. We don't have much time. We're running out of fuel. Found the terminal. Just need to boot it up. A message. It's like Haig sent a message to himself. This is Sergeant Haig. I'm recording this at Raven Creek HQ and uploading it to the system. I've locked myself in the lab. They're out there. Fucking banging at the door. My God, what have they done? If anyone is listening to this, you need to avoid Raven Creek. The dead here are different. God damn it. Since I'm probably not going to last the night, I might as well start from the beginning. Echo Company was tasked to secure the perimeter of a research facility northwest of Rosewood. Our objective was simple. Guard the scientists and don't ask questions. Easy enough. They didn't have to tell us twice. <sighs> Do you smell that? Yeah. You really think that's a refinery? I was company sergeant. My job? Keeping Echo Company in line. Lieutenant Connor was our commanding officer. Echo Company knew not to piss him off. But I knew him well enough to break formalities when the men weren't around. We signed a contract with Gentech three weeks before the shit hit the fan. Before it did, I was getting the feeling something real fucking weird was going on. <laughs> That's what HQ said. Smells like some kind of chemical, don't you think? Yeah, chemical weapons idea. The whole company was catching this flu of his. Weirdly enough, I was around Connor more than anyone else. Yet I was the only one who wasn't sick. You coming down with something, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Man, do I feel like shit. All right, have we done the guard rotations? Yeah, nothing to report either, except for this foul smell. As usual. You going to be giving the briefing today? Uh, yeah. After one year in Congo, little flu isn't going to stop me. All right, 1,400 hours in the briefing room. Copy? Yes, sir. The following day in the corridor, I heard one of the scientists talk about Gentech, a company that works on biotechnology. It was just another pharma corp to me back then. I didn't hear much, just something about Subject 13. Then it was all whispers. That's when I realized there was more to this than they were letting on. Did you get the memo? What memo? Well, it said that Subject 13 was having live tests. It's a pretty messed up shit, huh? What? Shh! That's confidential. You want to get fired? Met Connor in his office. Figured I'd ask him about the real reason we took this assignment. You spoke to Nancy? I can't. Phone lines are down. That was four days ago. I know. I'm sure they'll put them back up soon. I don't know. There's something weird about this posting, Connor. What are these nerds up to in there that have PMCs like us at such a high price on guard duty? 
gunner walks up to me and puts his hand on my shoulder. He looks at the ground before giving me a short sigh. It's above our pay grade, Sergeant. Part of the contract isn't to ask questions, remember? It just all seems a little odd. Phone lines are down, weird smell in the air, scientists being all hush-hush. Gunner looks down to the ground, pats me on the shoulder, and turns towards the door. <sighs> Again, above our pay grade. On July 6, 1993, head of research informed me that they needed to evacuate the facility. I radioed Raven Creek HQ for extraction at 1300 hours. Connor and over 20 members of Echo Company started to show symptoms of severe fever. At 2000 hours, the helicopter arrived for extraction. The researchers boarded first. I tried to put Corporal Wood and Private Gregory on the chopper. A firm hand was shoved into my right shoulder, a researcher's hand. He looked at me with panic in his eyes. You can't put them on the chopper. I shoved my M9 into his chest. The safety was on. He didn't know that. You put my men on the Healy, or I'll shoot you right fucking now. Do you understand me? Just moments after the chopper took off, I heard a radio broadcast from the scientist's office that all citizens were being evacuated. I tried radioing to Raven Creek HQ, but we lost contact. The radio frequency was dead. Even the contact of the chopper that had just left. I wonder if it was deliberate. We waited for the helicopter to return at 2100 hours. Then at 2200 hours. Then I began to realize it wasn't coming back. I returned to the storeroom and got everyone to sick bay. I placed Connor on the floor in the medical room. I kneeled at his side and grasped his hand. He looked at me and hands me a small chain necklace with a ring on it. <coughs> Give this to Nancy. She'll know what it means. Connor rolled his head to the side, shivering. No. You're going to get out of here. It's just a fever. Connor looked at me and shook his head. <sighs> Just get out of here, Egg. Shut up, Connor. I'm not leaving you behind. Doug, that's an order. I'm taking you with me. <sighs> uh, stubborn bastard. <laughs> That extraction chopper wasn't our extraction. I grabbed his shoulder and tried to help him up. He looks me in the eyes and shakes his head. I received a <coughs> radio transmission from the military yesterday. The evacuation is from this flu. No one survives it. We were never meant to leave. I could see it in his eyes. I could tell he knew what was coming. He must have told him his symptoms. That's probably why the scientist must have left. He looks at me, shivering as he tries to break a smile. Hey, <coughs> do you remember Mon Monrovia? <laughs> All nervous and clumsy. <laughs> you couldn't even hold a rifle straight. <laughs> yeah. You were company sergeant then. And look at you now. <laughs> you did good, son. You, you did good. I remember you saved my life a few times, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's what battle brothers do. Even when you were a rookie fighter in the worst place on earth, I still had your back. We had your back. Echo Company will always be 
with you. Just promise me one thing. Find Nancy. I stayed next to him for an hour after that. He slowly slipped into a coma. Most of Echo Company were unconscious or dying. I felt so helpless. I gave the men water, but their fever was too strong, no matter what I tried. With no medical attention, Echo Company was dying to the disease. I decided to take Connor outside, so I carried him to the corridor. The entire facility was silent. All the members of the staff were either dead or in a coma. Connor's grip on my shoulder was weak as we approached the door at the end of the corridor. I reached for the handle and I felt his grip return. Did he regain consciousness? I looked at Connor and said his name. He looked back at me. His eyes were lifeless. Connor? <laughs> Shit! What the fuck? Connor, get get back. Talk to me, goddammit. Please, brother, say something. As I held Connor down by his neck with my boot, I could see his face, twisted and empty, a savage shadow of his former self. I didn't see my commander anymore. I saw nothing but a creature. Connor was this thing, not alive or truly dead. I did what I had to do. I'll find her, I promise. I'm sorry. I sat by Connor's body for half an hour before the rest of Echo Company began to turn. I heard glass shattering, doors banging, and the humming ambience of hundreds of groans and snarls. These creatures that were once people began flooding into the facility. It took me a moment to realize that there were more than just Echo Company and the researchers in the building. I felt at the pit of my stomach that this may be my last fight. Okay, keep it together, Haig. I approached the entrance hall and walked outside. The setting sun's hue brimmed hundreds of silhouettes. My eyes adjusted to the light. The hairs on my neck stood on end. Oh my God. <laughs> 